This is Dr. Bob Akinlari. I'm from Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. Today we're going to discuss the case of a young woman who's had mild elevation of calcium and a lot of symptoms. So this is a 36-year-old woman with fatigue, brain fog, uh, memory issues, sleep problems, anxiety, increased anxiety, frequent urination, and um, palpitations, feeling her heartbeat rapidly at times. Um, she had a very astute primary doctor that noticed the elevated calcium numbers and got PTH levels, which showed the PTH to be very much elevated. So her calcium was 10.6, range of normal is 8.8 .8 to 10.2, so a slight elevation above normal. PTH was very much elevated above the normal being 65 for the upper range of normal. Hers is 110 and vitamin Ds are normal. So when she came to see me, I did an ultrasound in the office, which showed the parathyroid clearly. So on the ultrasound, you can see and the ultrasound is in this orientation. You can see the skin layer there, right? You can see the breathing tube like this, the thyroid which goes over the breathing tube to come to the left side of the neck. And just immediately underneath it, you see the parathyroid with a white shadow. This is the carotid artery here that has a white shadow and jugular vein which also has a white shadow, but these show flow in them and this doesn't. This may show one or two tiny blood vessels on a duplex part of the ultrasound. In any case, this was clearly a parathyroid, was underneath the lower part of the thyroid gland. The nerve would be somewhere around here. Let me erase these. So the vocal cord nerve would be somewhere around here, so close to the parathyroid. She had a minimally invasive parathyroidectomy uh, under local anesthesia with a touch of sedation. Um, the left inferior parathyroid was identified as being enlarged and it was sitting on the vocal cord nerve. So I gently separated it and removed it without causing any swelling or any issues with the vocal cord nerve. I checked her PTH levels before removing the parathyroid during surgery, it was 113. And then after removal of the parathyroid, I checked PTH levels at five, 10, and 15 minutes. And you can see the numbers came down to 28, 23, and 20 at five, 10, and 15 minutes. So the PTH came down dramatically and plateaued. What that told me is that the remaining three parathyroid glands are not producing a lot of hormone, a lot of extra hormone, which tells me they are not over-functioning there is no need for me to go look at them because functionally the levels of PTH they're producing are low and so the parathyroid glands are not overworking. There's no reason to go disturb them surgically and potentially cause scarring around them and so on and so forth, right? And this confirms the success of the procedure. Now, I also sent the specimen to the pathologist to look at it under the microscope while the patient was, was under sedation during surgery. And they confirmed that this was a cellular parathyroid gland, which is normal from a parathyroid gland. Normal parathyroid glands have half cells and half fatty tissue. And this was hypercellular, which means it was mostly cells and very little fat. And it, it's also said that there was a rim of normal cellular, which means a rim of parathyroid tissue that was 50% fat and 50% cell. This confirms that this was an adenoma and not hyperplasia. There was a little bit of thymic tissue close to it, and that happens because the thymus and the parathyroid are formed in the throat in the sixth week of life in the mom's belly, and they migrate together, so sometimes they kind of stick together. And this is the parathyroid gland, which is about a centimeter, the size that I did see on ultrasound. I always do labs at one month, six month, and yearly thereafter. So her labs, you can see calcium was 10.6 before surgery and it settled down in the mid nines and persisted in those numbers, right? PTH was very much elevated at 110. Upper limit of normal is 65. And then after surgery, you can see the first two sets at one month and six months, they're in the normal range, but the upper side are normal. And then they settle down to lower ranges of normal, right? And then they move up and down. And now this is not uncommon to see upper side of normal PTHs or slightly elevated PTHs after surgery that continue for six months to a year. That usually reflects that there's some degree of bone loss and the bones are grabbing the calcium and the remaining parathyroids are telling the bones, no, 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 give some of the parathyroids back, some of the calcium back to the 
to the bloodstream. We need it in the blood as well. So this battle ensues until the bones completely replenish their needs and vitamin Ds remain normal. Now, I do uh, symptom questionnaires and quality of life questionnaires for patients before and after surgery. So this is before surgery. Her numbers are here. This questionnaire is interesting because high numbers mean never having the symptom and a zero means always having the symptom, right? A one means many times, a two means from time to time, and three means hardly ever, right? So if you look at her symptomatology, most of them are in the middle here with a number of 49. So the lower the number, the more symptoms the person has. So at six months after surgery, the number goes up to 56. You can see there's a shift in numbers going more this way. Um, and then at one year, you see some symptoms to be look like they're happening more frequently, but overall, again, a shift and the number has improved. And then when you look at her symptoms at four years, the number has dramatically improved and all the symptoms are in the either three or four, mostly in the four range, meaning your symptoms can continue to improve years after you've had surgery. So if you're still having a lot of symptoms at one year, don't lose hope. There is a good chance that you'll still do well, that you'll have improvement. So continue to exercise, work hard, be physical. You do mental exercises, memory exercises, and you'll have improvement, right? You can still get better. If you have any more questions, if you're interested in clear parathyroid information or what to do next, if you need help with that, visit us at parathyroid.net. Uh, like this video, subscribe to us, ask us questions so I know what other videos to make for you and address this very strange disease. Be well.